Okay, here we go. Post trip moment number 13. Uh, this one is just incredible. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're dealing with somebody who's mentally deficient here. I mean, there's no nice, nice way for me to put it. Watch this. I've often asked those who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture to show me one verse in the Bible that actually uses the word tribulation. Okay, he says, show me one verse that actually uses the word tribulation. Uh, there's lots of them. And he's actually going to go on to use the word tribulation. I mean, I think we're dealing with somebody here who's got, who, whose mind is left, left them. You know, I don't know, maybe he was dropped on his head, you know, recently or something. Or maybe he drinks fluoride or something. I, you know, straight fluoride. I don't know. We're dealing with somebody that there's, there's lots of empty spaces up here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I'm being sarcastic, but this is ridiculous. Show me one verse that uses the word tribulation. Oh, there's lots of them. And he even admits to it. Watch. To support their doctrine. To prove their doctrine. Just one verse that says anything about the rapture coming before the tribulation or pre-trib rapture that actually uses the word tribulation in it. And okay. Uh, see, he just switched it there. You know? Uh, just one verse that talks about a pre-trib rapture and, a pre, you know, just, it has to use the word tribulation. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, as I've said in other studies, the word, this time period that's coming is not ever called the Great Tribulation. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Let's continue. Of course, out of all the 22 mentions of the word tribulation in the New Testament, None of them even comes close, and so they can never point you to a verse that uses the word tribulation. Okay, they can never point you to a, a verse that uses the word tribulation. You get that? They can never point you to a verse that uses the word tribulation. Now watch what he says. Listen to this. This is why I'm saying this guy's got mental problems. Listen. So therefore, they will point you to verses that use the word wrath instead. Well, I'm going to prove to you today that God's wrath is not poured out during the tribulation. Uh, you can't find any verses that use the word tribulation. I'm going to prove to you that God's wrath is not poured out during the tribulation. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're dealing with somebody who's got some serious mental problems right here. Okay. Incredible. The tribulation has nothing to do with God's wrath, and I'll prove that to you. In Matthew 24, 29, the Bible reads, Immediately after the tribulation of those days... Uh, wait a second, I thought he just said that there was uh, no scriptures that use the word tribulation. Uh, okay. Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So that right there states that after the tribulation is when the sun and moon will be darkened. Well, if we go to Revelation chapter 6, where we read about the sun and moon being darkened, the Bible reads in verse... Okay, let me just pause here for a minute again. Silly Steve Anderson here makes the uh, mistake, the big boo-boo that a lot of Christians, novices make. You know, he'll, he'll, he believes that the uh, seals and the trumpets and the vials are all separate and in succession. And somehow, you know, the rapture happens at the last trumpet. Um, but but yet it's the seal there, the sixth seal that opens. And that's when it ends. And, and after that comes the wrath. Listen. Verse number 12, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and every mighty man, and every bondman, and every free men hid themselves in the dens and in the mountains and the rocks and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb watch this for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand okay now what he tries to do here he, his little mental gymnastics he tries to say that the tribulation ends and now the wrath comes uh, just one big problem with that where does the body of Christ fit in? You see, well, they, they go up. You see, the rapture happens there at the end of the tribulation. Okay. And uh, doesn't the end of the tribulation bring in 
the Millennial Kingdom? Um, well, not apparently to him. But Jesus Christ comes back and all the world sees him. But then he, he holds off his Millennial Kingdom for another period of time till his wrath is poured out. What a bunch of nonsense. Let me just show you something here. Revelation... Revelation, uh, where are we at here? Revelation, excuse me. A little worked up right now, so I'm not thinking real clearly. <laughs> Revelation chapter 6. Okay, here the Lord Jesus Christ is opening the seals. First seal is the white horse. Okay, he goes out conquering and to conquer. Alright. The second seal is open, and it's a red horse. And he takes peace from the earth. Okay, they should kill one another. Alright. Um, you mean to tell me that this isn't God's wrath? When the Lord Jesus Christ unleashes first the Antichrist, and then he comes and he brings war, and there's no more peace on the earth? He takes peace from the earth? This isn't God's wrath, God's judgment? Next comes a black horse. Okay, and what does he bring? He brings famine. Okay, talks about measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Uh, that's not God's judgment on the lost world. Yes, it is. Fourth seal, pale horse, and death and hell followed him. Okay, and the fourth part of the earth, he kills with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. And this somehow isn't God's judgment and wrath on the world? you got to be pretty warped to think these things. Okay? This guy is not a Bible teacher. All right? We are dealing with somebody here who has no guidance of the Holy Spirit in the matter of discerning the book of Revelation. Okay? Just incredible. The stuff that this guy comes up with. I mean, at the beginning of the video, he says, there is no... So we use the word tribulation in reference to the rapture. Now I'm going to show you, you know, there's no scripture to prove this word tribulation. And then he goes and he says, I'm going to show you verses that talk about the tribulation. I don't know. This, this guy needs some help.